Hello and welcome to Quantitative Analysis for Management, 13th edition. This is Chapter 1, Introduction to Quantitative Analysis. The copyright is for Pearson Education and this PowerPoint will be narrated by Professor Charles Powell. Today's learning objectives. Students will be able to describe the quantitative analysis approach and understand how to apply it in a real world situation. Describe three categories of business analytics. Describe the use of modeling in quantitative analysis. Prepare a quantitative analysis model. Use computers and spreadsheet models to perform quantitative analysis. Recognize possible problems in using quantitative analysis. And recognize implementation concerns of quantitative analysis. Chapter Outline 1.1 through 1.7 These mathematical tools have been used for thousands of years. Quantitative analysis can be applied in a wide variety of problems. It's not enough to just know the mathematics of this technique. We must understand the specific applicability of the technique, its limitations, and its assumptions. Successful use of quantitative techniques are usually results in a solution that is timely, accurate, flexible, economical, reliable, and easy to understand. Some examples of, the, of its use over the years. Taco Bell saved over $150 million using forecasting and employee scheduling, quantitative analysis models. NBC Television increased revenues by over $200 million by using quantitative analysis to develop better sales plans for their advertisers. And Continental Airlines saved over $40 million every year using quantitative analysis models to quickly recover from weather delays and other Quantitative analysis is a scientific approach to managerial decision making in which raw data are processed and manipulated to produce meaningful information. The factors are data that can be accurately calculated. Different investment alternatives, interest rates, financial ratios, cash flows, rates of return, flow of materials through a supply chain. Qualitative factors are more difficult to quantify, but the effect but they affect the decision process. Such things as the weather, state and federal legislation from our politicians, technological breakthroughs, and the outcome of a presidential election or a local election. Quantitative and qualitative factors may have different roles. Decisions based on quantitative data can be automated. Generally, quantitative analysis will aid the decision-making process. Importantly, in many areas of management, such as production and operations management, supply chain management, and business analytics. A data-driven approach to decision-making allows us to make better decisions with large amounts of data. Information technology is also very important. Statistical and quantitative analysis are used to analyze the data and provide useful information. Now there are three types. Descriptive analytics is the study and consolidation of historical data. Predictive analytics is forecasting future outcomes based on the patterns in the past data. And prescriptive analytics is the use of optimization methods. Table 1.1, Business Analytics and Quantitative Analysis Model, shows with each of the analytic categories the quantitative analysis techniques. It also shows which chapters you will see. In order to define the problem, we must develop a clear and concise statement of the problem to provide direction and meaning. This may be the most important and difficult step. We must go beyond the symptoms and identify the true causes. Concentrate on only a few of the problems. Selecting the right problem is a very important step. We must be specific and measurable and may have Objectives may have to be developed. When developing a model, we have to be realistic, solvable, and understandable 
of mathematical representations of a certain situation. Different types of models include physical models, scale models, and schematic models. Mathematical model, a set of mathematical relationships. Models generally contain variables and parameters. Controllable variables, decision variables, are generally known. How many items should be ordered for inventory is an example. Parameters are known quantities that are part of a model. What is the cost of placing an order? Required input data must be available. The input data must be accurate. See the GIGO rule. Data may come from a variety of sources, company reports, documents, employee interviews, direct me measurement, or statistical sampling. Manipulating the model to arrive at the best optimal solution. The common techniques of doing so are solving algebraic equations. Trial and error. Trying various approaches and picking the best result. Complete enumeration. Trying all possible values. Using an algorithm. A series of repeating steps in order to reach a solution. Then we test the solution. Both input data and the model should be tested for accuracy and the completeness before analysis and implementation. New data can be collected in order to test the model. Results should be logical, consistent, and represent a real situation. Analyzing the results. Determine the implications of the solution. Implementing the results often requires change in an organization. The impact of actions or changes needs to be studied and understood before implementation. Sensitivity analysis, post-optimality analysis, determines how much the results will change if the model or input data changes. Sensitive models should be very, very thoroughly tested. Implementation incorporates the solution into the company. Implementation can be difficult. People are always resistant to change. Many quantitative analysis efforts have failed because a good, workable solution was not properly implemented. Changes occur over time, so even the successful implementations must be monitored to determine if modifications are necessary. Quantitative analysis models are used extensively by organizations to solve real problems. In the real world, quantitative analysis models can be complex, expensive, and difficult to sell. Following steps in the process is an important component for success. How to develop a quantitative analysis model. A mathematical model of profit. Profit equals revenue minus expenses. This sounds simple. Revenue and expenses can be expressed in different ways, however. Profit equals revenue minus parentheses, fixed costs plus variable costs, and parentheses. Now, this means your selling price per unit times the number of units sold minus the fixed cost plus the variable cost per unit times the number of units sold. Okay. This can be shown in an algebraic equation, where S is the selling price per unit, V is the variable cost per unit, F is the fixed cost, and X stands for the number of units sold. You can see here the parameters of this model are F, V, and S, as these are the inputs inherent in the model. The decision variable of interest is X, which stands for the number of units sold. Let's look at an example. Pritchett's Precious Time Pieces. This company buys and sells and repairs old clocks. Rebuilt springs sell for $8 per, per unit. We will label that S as the selling price per unit. The fixed cost of equipment to build the springs is $1,000.
we will label that F for the fixed cost. The variable cost for spring material is $3 per unit. We will label that V. The number of spring sets sold we will set to X because we do not have that information yet. So therefore our profit equation sets to be profits equals 8x minus 1,000 minus 3x. If sales equal zero, meaning we have no sales, our profit will be negative $1,000 as our fixed cost. If sales equal 1,000 units, profits would equate to $4,000. Companies are often interested in break-even points, the BEP. This is the number of units sold that will result in a $0 profit. In order to find this, we will set our equation equal to 0. So therefore, P for profits will equal 0. From this point, we solve for X. So therefore, the break-even point comes out to be the fixed cost divided by the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. If we look at the Pritchett's precious timepiece example, the break-even point equation would look like this. $1,000 divided by $8 minus $3, which is going to be equal to 200 units. Therefore, the sales of less than 200 units of rebuilt springs will result in a loss for the company. Any sale over 200 units of rebuilt springs will result in a profit. The advantages of mathematical modeling. Models can accurately represent reality. They can help a decision maker formulate problems and give us insight and information. They can save companies time, money, in the decision-making and problem-solving process. A mathematical model may be the only way to solve a large or complex problem in a timely fashion. A model can also be used to communicate problems and solutions to other stakeholders. Mathematical models that do not involve risk or chance are called deterministic models. Mathematical models that involve risk or chance are called probabilistic model. There are also problems in the quantitative analysis approach. One of the big problems is actually defining the actual problem. They may not be easily identified. You may not get to the root cause. This may be because of conflicting viewpoints. There's also impact on other departments when making decisions. And we also may have assumptions or solutions that are outdated. Developing the model can also be a challenge. Fitting the textbook model, understanding the model. Acquiring accurate input data, using that accounting data and the validity of the data. Developing a solution. Mathematics is hard to understand for many people. Only one answer is a very, very limiting solution. Testing the solution is not always intuitively obvious. Analyzing the results. How will it affect the total organization? Implementation is not just the final step. Lack of commitment and resistance to change Fear of formal analysis and process will reduce management's decision-making power. Fear previous intuitive decisions as exposed as inadequate. Uncomfortable with new thinking patterns. Action-oriented managers may want quick and dirty techniques. Management, support, and user involvement are very important. Lack of commitment by quantitative analysts. Analysts should be involved in the problem and care about the solution. Analysts should also work with the users and take their feelings into account.